Do you want me to plug into Vaughn? I got, I got Vaughn plugged in. Um, hello, does everyone hear? I got, I got Vaughn plugged in. Yes, it's working. Yes, it's working. Are we on air then? Okay, but oh. yeah, guys, it's working. Jolly go. Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I'm ignoring it. Jolly go. Okay. But continue with what you guys were talking about before. What about uh, Islam? What about? Yes. Okay. Uh, what were we yeah. talking about? Okay. Uh, it seems so little to go. It <laughs> At what point did we get caught? Um, <laughs> At what point did we get caught? I'm thinking. Um, uh, I'm thinking. Um, did they hear anything anyone except Steve said? Did yeah, did anyone anything uh, hear anything anyone earlier? Steve said? Yeah, did anyone, uh, also, I hear an echo from somebody. I don't think they did. Oh. So, um... Where the hell is oh. Steve, anyway? And also, Gary, I think your thing's loud. No what, sorry? Someone's sound. No what, sorry? I'm on headphones, so you shouldn't be getting any, any feedback. I'm I'll stick headphones in, just in case it's me. I'll I don't know who it is. Just in case it's me. I'll mute my microphone for a second, see if that helps. I'll mute my microphone for a second. Oh, it's me. <laughs> Okay, it should be better now. Okay, cool. Okay, so um what are your views um what are your views on um on the Middle East, Gary? I can't see it from here. <laughs> um my news, views on the Middle East. There's there's so many issues woven into what is the Middle East, you know, that you'd have to be a bit more specific than that. Okay, 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 Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Israel, all that stuff. <laughs> that more specific. <laughs> um, today's riots in Turkey are interesting. There was a riot in Turkey? Yes, there's been riots, several riots in several cities in Turkey. Um, which is interesting because there's a, there's a whole number of different issues and the government sent the police in quite hard but then suddenly realized that it was live on al jazeera and sort of like withdrew the police it's sort of like rather sharpish so you know that just goes to show that there's, there's there is just a general spirit of, of, of resistance in the middle east at the moment especially in the in the in the in the, in the mediterranean rim countries um which goes back perhaps to dpr's point that that, that, that about progress perhaps there is some sort of progress being driven in some kind of way in the middle east perhaps by the internet and the and the, and the exposure to the media and the fact that their po the population of those countries, I believe, is is is, is relatively young, relatively youthful. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, from what I hear, pretty much it's a hellhole. From what I hear. Well, yeah, it depends. It depends what you watch, isn't it? I mean, it depends whose whose word you take for it. It's not all a hellhole. Um, you know, there's not, there's not, it's not a hellhole from, from, from all the way from sort of like Afghanistan down to sort of like Morocco. I mean, I'm sure there's, there's pockets of things happening that are, that are, that are not hellish at all. Um, it depends where you get your information from. How, how, how much do we know? And when we do get information, to what extent can we trust it? This, this again, perhaps, is where critical being having some critical thinking faculties is useful. I mean, do you do you trust what you hear on the news? Which news stations do you trust? Which ones don't you trust? Um, or do you 
sample a wide variety and trust them in different ways. Uh, what's your view on it, Cheeky? Uh, I was going to just ask Gary, uh, do you trust Al Jazeera? I find out, in some ways, I find Al Jazeera quite good. Yes, they do seem to have they do seem to have some kind of sort of like like um, some. What I look for is certain virtues. I, I, I wouldn't trust Russia Today, for example. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't say much about Russia, does it? it, it, it you know, it's uh, but it's I, Al Jazeera don't seem too bad. I, I can I can. I, Stuff that I see in Al Jazeera seems to be confirmed. If I go digging elsewhere and look at things that I trust, I tend to find there's some sort of like coherence between what Al Jazeera says and 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 and, and, and other trustworthy sources. Um, so yeah, I think Al Jazeera seems okay to me. I, don't, I can't see anything glaringly wrong with Al Jazeera. Is he dead? Who? Um, not Al Jazeera. Never mind. But uh, DPR, any thoughts? Sorry, you're going to have to give me a couple of notes. I'm just dealing with something. Oh. Okay. Um, but um, what are your views, um, you guys, um, with the whole... Um, uh, um, the whole thing in Afghanistan, from what you guys hear of. You guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. What is it good? No, well, not really. No. I think the main thing at the moment is is um, withdrawing in an honourable way, especially. I mean, speaking for for, for for my own country, the United Kingdom, our, our withdrawal from 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 Iraq, especially Basra, was particularly shameful. Um, but uh, sort of, uh, yeah, it's 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 it's. Can we leave it, and will it stand up, or will it fall back into what it was before? That's the big question, perhaps, with regards to Afghanistan. And what about you, Chicky? Uh, I have no idea. I mean, going in there, it just seemed like... It seemed like, you know, pissing in the wind to me. I mean, we did get out. We get it. We did, from the USA, we did get Osama bin Laden. Was it worth it? Was well, it worth it? I mean, I mean, the weird thing is, if he was in Afghanistan this whole time, couldn't we have just, you know, sent a squad in and did what they did, you know, at the, you know, in the beginning? But you wouldn't have been able to find him. I think the closest the Americans did get to find him after the initial operation, it all fell apart a bit, and he nipped out into Pakistan. Um, uh, but it's yeah, I mean, you did get us in Bin Laden. Osama bin Laden was is is, is was a figurehead. And that's a, I suppose the the, 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 the degree of which, to which that's a victory is the degree to which figureheads matter in this conflict rather than ideas. Well, yeah, I mean, like, um, he was the guy who did the whole uh, uh, VH, VHS tape thing, right? I think. I mean, I, Who's I mean, that? I mean, Osama. Uh, well, he used to make he used to make VHSs and send them out, and you know, people would get them. Yeah, because it was a figurehead, so you'd basically get, they'd get messages, when they felt it was safe, they'd send out messages because they felt he was a figurehead, that he sort of like, he would help in the, 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 their media campaign, their public relations campaign, um, you know, the sp spreading the idea of this particular Islamist, ideologically extreme kind of uh, sector of the faith. So that's where he kept, he kept sort of making tapes and stuff. <laughs> And if you know, but again, that's the question: how how important was that? Is it is it are we well are we are we fighting figureheads, you know, with drones or 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 or, or, or sort of like um, kill squads, or are we fighting uh, a set of grievances and a set of ideas? What well, what is the enemy? Well, I mean, um, the problem was that there was no unified enemy. It was a group of people, you know, right? Yeah. We are back. You guys talk among yourselves. Something's happening. <laughs> Is there anybody here to talk to? Yeah, this just isn't my area at all. Oh, um, no, it's, 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 uh... It's not something I sort of like to talk about, really. Um, 
<laughs> in much depth for one reason. But um, yeah, so Islam. What about that Islam then, eh? <laughs> I don't necessarily think that Islam is more worse, it is more extreme intrinsically than uh, Christianity. Uh, you know, the Ibn Warak, I, I tried to say this before, but uh, I lost my connection, is that there's, uh, he, he was going on about Islam A, B, and C. You know, Islam A is what Muhammad said, which is a lost. B would be what is in the Quran, and then C is how it is expressed. Mm. Uh, and I think Islam C is pretty extreme, but, you know, uh, probably, I don't know if DPR would uh, dispute that. Wait, you want me to ask, you want me, you want me bring in a Christian to, to ask him what his view on this is? Okay. Yeah, why not? Okay, I'll bring in uh, Donald. You guys all know Donald, right? No, I know of him. Okay, I'll bring Donald in. And Angry Pumpkin, since he's a pumpkin. Let's see, uh, let's see. There. It's so hard using it on one screen, doing the show on one screen, it's a bitch. Good uh, morning. Hey, Donald. Hey, what's up, buddy? Oh. Sorry, I didn't call you right back. I, I was um, responding to Johnny Whitaker. Who's Johnny Whitaker? If you're old enough, uh, you'd remember a show called Family Affair. No. No? Anybody? <laughs> um, Family Affair was a TV show in the late 70s, early 80s. And he was the child actor that was in the show. Uh -huh. And I, I've been trying to correspond with him on Facebook to try to get him on my show. And any luck with that? Actually, it's, look prom it's, look it's looking promising because he's... Uh, I, I'm, he wants... Uh, he suffers from C CRS, which I don't know because I haven't looked it up yet. But um, it's it's a memory thing, and so it's like, so, al so it's like Alzheimer's. But kind of, but for younger people, from and from what I gather, I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best to try to find find out more information about it. But um, he, that's who I was writing a letter to before you called. Now, <clears throat> when when do you want to do the show? Oh, well, you're on right now. Oh, I am? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Should have mentioned that. Uh, because the topic today was is Islam. What is your thoughts on Islam? Islam? Um, I, I find it appalling that they claim to be the, the religion of peace, but at no point have I read anywhere in the Quran and studied the history of the path of Islam have I ever seen peace at all. So my my I, I have two perspectives. I have a average Joe perspective that I think they're appalling, and then on my religious side, that they the nowhere in the Quran. I uh, I've read scriptures out of the Quran itself in Sudan nine five. It says, "Kill anybody who does not believe in Allah." So to me, that's not peace, and they teach this on an all the time basis. Every the only, now does that mean that the individual is uh, is about hate? No, I don't believe I don't I, I don't go by judging the individual. I go by indiv judging what they teach. Well, yeah, that's, so, that's a good approach. Because you know you can't really base your judgment on the individual by what what they're taught. You have to judge the individual on their own actions, and every, every. I mean, yeah, it's sensationalized in media, which is kind of a messed up thing. But the United States itself is trying to enact Sharia law, which I, which I find appalling. Wait, wait, but where, where is that from? Because I never actually heard about this. What? It's trying to enact Sharia law. Yeah, in the in the in the East Coast. There's a couple of states that are trying to at, enact the Sharia law for the is, Islamic uh, cultures. But I'm you sorry, mean by enact it, to actually make it the, the, the written law of those particular states? Well, not, not, a, not on a state level, but you know how, like, um, some, some places, like, say, uh, um, uh, like some states will will acknowledge, say Buddhist beliefs and stuff like that, 
acknowledge so just basically say yeah, that basically they're... that's all it is is acknowledging it but at least with buddhists they're not trying to like if a woman gets raped in the sharia law she needs to have four men to witness her being raped or she's not she hasn't been raped they're trying to con do a conflict between our the american law and sharia law not the sharia courts huh at the Sharia courts, because I think there are over here, or they've at least had a good go at enacting them, where you you know people can go who are, who are Muslims and they get you know they get just get treated in an entirely different it's, way. Yeah, but civil civil cases, particularly to do with with marriage and issues of sort of like families and things like that, they're only limited to that field. Uh, there's still problems with it, but but tell me, um, uh, Donald, do you think that the majority of Americanized Muslims would actually agree that you need four people to, to witness, uh, four men have to say that there's been a rape for there to be a rape, or would they actually be more comfortable with uh, the idea that, you know, you take first person testimony from the victim? I think, <clears throat> I can only speak from, from hearing in media and, and seeing their reactions, so personally I've never met a, an a Islamic person, and I know a few but uh, I've, I've never met one that agrees with it. So that's why they came here, is to get away from it. And mm -hmm. why they would want to acknowledge Sharia law just blows my mind. Could you think you could be a devout Muslim in some way and be a good American? Is it possible to be a Muslim in some sense and a good American in some sense? I think... See, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know enough about uh, the Islamic faith to really answer that question because I think that there's too many con uh, conflicts, or there's too many, um, there's too many, uh, co uh, not contradictories. Yeah, just too many conflicts between what the Muslim or Islam believes than there is for. To be a to be an American because the laws contradict each other. I mean, I mean, honestly, that one with the um, you need four people to witness the raping, that seems a little practical. No offense, it does seem a little practical. But that's you know, if it's obvious the woman has been raped. Well, I mean, yes, but I'm saying like. But you know, in the, in the Sharia law, obvious or not, she still needs to have four witnesses. Well, I mean, male. Male witnesses, not for just general witnesses, as before male witnesses. Well, yes, yes, I'm saying if there is no signs of physical stress or none of that stuff, you know, then how do you know she's not, how she, you know, she could just be lying? Like that, granted, that's, granted, that, that's a very good point. And, and, that, that, and that seems like the practical, that seems like the practical piece of it. Right, and, and, you know, but see, the conflict here is that even if the woman is physically been abused, uh, been abused or raped, okay, she still needs to have four witnesses, regardless. So even if, even if she, let's just say, to say, uh, arguing, you've got a woman that doesn't look like she's been physically raped, okay, she, she has to have four men. That, that's practical. I mean, you have to have some kind of witness or some kind of, someone that will back you up. You but need an alibi. I'm speak. Yeah, you need an alibi, and I. But I'm speaking of the women that it's obvious that they were raped. Surely that, that they, isn't. <laughs> surely that isn't practical, though, because you know um, people don't tend to rape other people in front of an audience. Right, and the and that's the reason why, in this country, if there's probable cause, that's all she needs. But in the Sharia law, probable cause or not. She has to have four witnesses. Well, is it possible? Is it possible that somebody might be a Muslim who disagrees with that? In the way uh, that there are things in the Bible that there are many good course, Christians and good people. And, I, and, and I'm, a perfect, I'm, a, I'm a perfect example of that, Gary, for the simple fact that I question the Bible too. So I'm sure that there are Muslims. I, I'm pretty sure women, uh, Muslim, women who are Islamic would go, <clears throat> would uh, have a problem with that. But mm -hmm. I'm sure that there are men that do too. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I... So the problematic group, uh, uh, really, on both sides, uh, are those who don't question 
this, what they conceive to be the source of their morality, those who take a very hardcore, extreme interpretation of it. Right, and, and but see, that's the thing. I mean, you're, we're talking oranges and apples at this point because, you know, the fact is, is that we've got... We've got we've got people that say that that their religion is a religion of peace, and currently in this time frame, not in the past, but in the time this current time frame, I don't see them as a as a, a religion of peace at all. And I'm sure that there's a lot of them that want to have some kind of basis to, religiously to see that there is some good in the religion. I mean, I do it for for Christianity, and I know the history of Christianity. I know that there's there's atrocities that are in the Bible that I don't I don't I choose not to to um, dwell on. <clears throat> okay, but that's hundreds of years ago. Okay, and you know the the Inquisitions that the Catholics did, you know that 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 stuff that really happened. But we're talking about present day Islam. And present day Islam is the one that's being being questioned here, and I think that they they are not the the religion of peace. They have not given me any belief to or any any point to believe that they have they are the religion of peace. So what what could Islam do to reform? As in as in we uh, generally in, in the West, if you like, have moved beyond that kind of thing to some extent. Uh, how, how could Islam how could Islam progress? Well, first of all, they can start treating their women with a little bit of respect because they're the one that brought the men into the world. Okay, how, how did we how did we come to treat women with more respect? Because as we, as we, as we were talking about earlier, and I mentioned this because nobody heard it, yeah, uh, we true. haven't always we haven't always respected women in the West either. I mean, you know, they couldn't vote right. in, in, until the early nineteen twenties. So, how did we make that progress, and how could Islam make that progress, assuming that it needs to? You know, even even with the um, the offshoot of women voting, they've always been respected and loved in this country, yeah, at least in the United States. Mm, you know, they've all. They, they, I don't. Know. I don't think. Billy, really? let me ask you a question. Do you respect your mom? Not that much. Okay, then that's your personal choice. <laughs> but gener generally, you love your mother, you love your girlfriend, you love your your wife. In their country, they have no respect for women. Period. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure I they interject. Their mother yeah, I was going to say. Wife. I was going to say that you can't. You can't choose your mother, but you can choose your girlfriend. So you could choose to. Love I, yeah. Go ahead. Can I interject? Um, the I think a Muslim, your average Muslim who actually does have a wife who wears a veil, would say, "No, this is what respect is. You have it wrong." Because she's been in that lifestyle for her entire life. That's why. No, That's I all think she knows. Mean, that's I a think they would all trait. say, yeah, I agree, but I don't think the, the what they're lacking respect, I think they're confused about what respect is. So just, mm -hmm. just hair splitting, but I guess. Once upon, once upon a time, of course, you know, we... It was seen that it was respecting women not to give them the vote because it was it was seen as being harmful to the virtues of femininity, this engagement in public life. That that was a doctrine that people in Victorian times, for example, held. And that was that was seen as, as being a question of, of, of respect as well. We wouldn't agree with that now. I mean, um, could it be a cultural divide, possibly? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, like um, like us with the Japanese. The Japanese have a different disdain of respect slash honor than we do. Than you know, Britain and America. Oh, absolutely. Does. So, yeah. so, could it be could it be a cultural <coughs> disconnect, or could it be the religion themselves? Because I think it's actually maybe cultural. I think it's cultural. I mean, and and with all all due due respect, you know, I think that women are held up on a higher regard presently. Yeah, I we can we can debate and argue about history. But currently is what I speak of, because I live in the now. And as long as I've been alive, women have been able to vote. So that's 40 years. And that's all I can speak of. I can't, I mean, I, I, we can, I, I can agree that in our American history, women were, were treated poorly when it comes to political stances. But in the home, yeah, we, we, there's always going to be 
domestic violence. Okay, but on the whole, as a country, women are held up on a high regards because they give birth. In in Islam, they don't give a damn if you get if you if we gave birth to you. You know, figuratively speaking. See, and that's well, always the way it's been. I don't know. I think Cheeky might have a point. They might say, well, look, these these people who gave birth to us, they deserve our respect. So they deserve, you know, they deserve protecting from male attention. They deserve protecting from the from the harms that are in the in the world for the for the un, 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 unmonitored woman. You know, that, that, that it's just that their idea of respect is very different to our idea of respect. Exactly, and, and that's 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 why. Uh, Kiki, I completely agree with you. I do believe it's culturally, not religiously. My question is, though, is it's probably harder to get them to reformulate their idea of what respect is rather than just to get them to go from not respecting to respecting the women. You know, right. how, how do you get someone just to um, completely change their view radically about what that, what that entails? Well, how does it happen? Because it certainly happens. I mean, even even within even within within since the the nineteen sixties, uh, attitudes have changed. So something changes it. So perhaps the question is best approached from how does it happen, and if we feel that it can be sort of like beneficial for change to happen, we'll have some idea of how to do it. Well, I think it happens via criticism. Mm. Um. Uh, you know, you you just argue these things out, and Islam seems like a religion. I know uh, where that doesn't happen quite so much. And plus, on the on the on another side of it, we we are a progressive country. I mean, we we're at the point now where it's a woman's world, not a man's world anymore. So, no, and I can prove you wrong. I can prove you wrong before you even go start going. I disagree. There are women CEOs in this country. But is there women? There are women there, politicians it, it, in this country. But is there, there women, are women that? There they they have households that the woman is the only sole provider. So okay. yes, but, women have gotten a lot more respect. Yes, yes, this yes, country but, but, than any other country. Uh, isn't there a prime minister that's a woman somewhere? Australia. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, well, I I'm talking about being progressive from being the way we were 50, 60 years ago to what we are now. Islam yeah. has been the same for 500 years and more. To current present day Islam. Yeah. So yes, yeah, our country. Once upon a time, actually. Step. Once upon a time, actually, uh, for a period of time, Islam was more critical and there was more open discussion in Islam than there was in the West during the medieval period. But that changed. Uh, it's also been a change. There's also been a change in more recent times. You know, uh, since the 19th century, in, in what's well, considered the Ottoman Empire. Pretty much. Yeah. So yeah. But yeah, you're, yeah. And you're so, speaking. So, you're speaking of history, and I'm speaking of present day. Well, so. I mean, no, okay, what about the future, the though? Empire, actually, the we're, we're talking about the future. If you want, the, if we want a better future, uh, surely we can learn from the past how to get from where we are in the present to that better future. Correct, and 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 I see I see a positive future if we keep being as progressive as we are. Mm -hmm. You know, but. The, um, but you did ask me my my views on Islam, and I speak of current events, and current what's happening in in my lifetime. And no, I don't think they're a, a religion of peace. I don't think that they're a culture of peace. Uh, yes, I I do believe that down uh, you know at the end of every day you know they they do value family, but they don't have any respect for the f females of the family mm -hmm. culturally. So, you know, I mean, that that's basically my answer. <laughs> okay. Well, there are certain um, Islamic apologetics, like you confront them with things like, does it say here you beat your wife? And then it goes on about sort of symbolically, you know, like tapping her or something or other. And then it's like, you know, it, that seems like someone who's, who's squirming. So maybe it's not the case that, you know, what I said before, where they're just uh, confused about what respect is. Well, every, every, every person has their definition of respect. You know, I've, I, we had this discussion a while back on, on the Lion Ghost show when, I, when I, we were talking about the Ten Commandments and everything and how I perceive respect and so on and so forth. So, I mean, but 
as a culture, I, I think we all understand what respect is. You give respect and you get respect. Well, I mean, and, and that I mean, and that culture, they don't. The, the men have the say over everything. Well, I mean, it could be like. For example, if you walked into a Japanese household, you know, a really, like, you know, culturally Japanese household, and you don't take off your shoes at the door, they'll look down on you because you disrespected them. You just exactly. Them. Like, exactly. Like, 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 that's the cultural divide. Like, you know, like, in our in our culture, you know, you could come in your house with your shoes on. Who cares? You know, it's like, oh, what? The but the, but to, be, to be fair, there are people that are Americans that were born here and lived here all their life that tell you to take your shoes off at, the, at their door. Well, and you respect them by taking your shoes off. Well, yes, but it's a custom I'm saying there. Right. No, I understand, I understand what you meant, but <clears throat> to say that we don't have we don't have simil similar cultures, there are people that it's it's been that way in their family their, their entire life. But I, think, so. but I think the point is your average American would walk into the house without even thinking about taking their shoes off. Of course, of course. But I, I, but if they know, I mean, most people post it on their door. I mean, I've been a door-to-door -door salesman. I've seen thousands of doors where you can't walk in. I mean, they got the shoes right in the front of the house. Mm. You know, I mean, it's not like it's just an occasional thing. I mean, when I was living in Florida, there were people, I mean, just about this one block I remember distinctly I had to wear my uh, my uh, slip-on shoes that were if I knew I was going in that neighborhood I had to wear my slip-on shoes that way I could take them off at, at, at a whip you know that way I didn't have to worry about take the time to have to tie my shoes I just grab my slip-ons and go take them off when I went in their house I mean but that's because they they're obsessed with being clean you know <laughs> some people that's why they do it or maybe that's right. maybe that's at the root of, of, of the Islamic culture as well, and, and you know maybe there's things that, that there's a sort of a consensus, an overlapping consensus, and people can agree on these kind of things. Perhaps as much as long as they don't go delve into them too deeply and try to make them of supernatural or, or, or absolute significance. But you can respect somebody who wants to. It's just like respecting somebody who doesn't want you to smoke in their house or, or something like that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, and that's that's ultimately where I would sit with it is that, you know, if, say, for example, uh, you go into a house that maybe a, a Christian home and they don't want you to cuss in their house, mm -hmm. you know, most people will, will respect that because of the fact that they don't want to, they want to have a, a, a more, uh, a better conversation piece instead of having to result to juvenile uh, or juvenile cussing mm -hmm. you know and and but they are the type of people that would rather um have grown-up conversations instead of cussing because i know i cuss I, I i'll be the first one to admit it i cuss like a sailor when i get passionate about something but if i go into a place where i know they don't cuss i'll do my best not to so you know and it, it is ultimately a Respecting someone's domain or their 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 living. Well, that's that's I think is the problem a little bit. I mean, like, I mean, in their country, it's their domain in a sense. The Muslim, the Muslim mm -hmm. world, you know, the Arab world, whatever you want to call it. Um, also, DPR, are you still there? Is he dead? Um, but um, like, but they want to make themselves at home here. I guess you could say, you know, kind of like. Uh, other cultures like making themselves home in America. You know? mm -hmm. Well, that's that's the American heritage, isn't it? I mean, that you to be to be blunt, you wiped out the original culture. But there's sort of like the um, there's a thing, there's a thing where where how do the people from different cultures come together and how they negotiate some kind of overlapping view or consensus on these issues. And, you know, and, 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 and what Donald was saying about you sort of like, you can understand somebody's other, or some other person's point of view quite charitably, and you can sort of like start negotiating on the basis of that. And perhaps that's the way we should interact with, 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 with other cultures, you know, even within our own countries, is, is you know, with some spirit of, of curiosity to start off with, and some skepticism perhaps as to some of the things that we're told sometimes. I mean, there's certainly lots of people and interests in the media who have a have a have an interest in portraying it in a certain way, you know. So we shouldn't always believe what we're told, not on face value, 
and also at the, time, at the same time, yeah, I mean, you said earlier on, Donald, you, you probably never really interacted with, 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 with many Muslims. Um, that's a big thing, isn't it? Because it means as soon as one starts talking about people who has no, no, no real experience of, then it's very easy to fall into error or assumption. Right, and and that and just like part the expression, but assumption is the mother of all fuck ups. You know, I mean, it, that's when our our div division starts happening. Was people start to make assumptions. That's why I don't. I don't. If someone asks me, I I give them my opinion. Mm. I don't. I don't. And if I if someone asks me literally, how uh, do I know anything about it? I'll be the first one to admit it. You know, I mean, if I don't know anything no about the Muslim religion other than what I've seen in documentaries or spoken to. I, there was someone that I used to, that used to come in my show all the time. Um, her name is Neon um, uh, Islam, Neon something or another. Uh, Lorraine, she's she's a newly converted Muslim, mm -hmm. and I I haven't seen her in a while, and but she used to answer any question I had. You know, and not that I want to be converted, but just because I want to know about Curious. the about the faith. Yeah. You know, and not and only because I don't believe that I, I look I, and I'm very adamant about this, even on my YouTube channel. I, I've made I've made it clear that, you know, get to know the person and then ask them about their religion. You know, if you want to know about the religion, or if you want to know something about them, be, make the, make it clear that you don't want to be uh, converted, but you want to understand it more. You know, and yeah, you you get those who say, "Well, we believe in in peace and love and all this other stuff," and not to judge not to judge us by our our fundamentals. Like I try to tell people about the radical or the fundamental Christians. Not all of us Christians are the exact same. We don't hold up signs that say God hates fags. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's thousands of us like that. And when I say thousands of it, I'm not joking. I've come across over mil uh, millions of people in my travels. And I've met thousands of Christians that are like me. And so to claim that, that all Christians are the same, or just like all Muslims are the same, I think the individual takes what they want from their religion to, to have a, a happier uh, li uh, life dwelling, I guess, would be the best word to use. Okay. Uh, Gary, uh, you were, we were talking about uh, New Labour. You know, oh, yeah, right, exactly, buddy. Okay. Uh, and sort of, it was interesting because th there are a lot of Muslims who I speak to who almost don't seem religious. Mm. Um, I think those people are interesting because they're they're um, assisting a, a demographic like uh, I, I don't want to call them pawns. That's a bit unkind. But they're you know they they have no interest in theology or anything like that. You know they maybe go to the, a mosque like once a month. But they're you know like when Dawkins asked uh, all these people you know are you Christians? What kind of Christian are you? And a lot of people were mostly apathetic. But these massive number of people were affecting public policy. Well, their theology was seen as, a, as having a voice in public po uh, policy when, when they weren't particularly theological or, 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 or sort of metaphysically minded. And yet, yet you know, you, like we were saying earlier, you go to, you go to these TV programs which are called The Big Question or they're The Moral Panel or something, and there's always somebody representing a particular a metaphysical theological point of view when when many of the people who uh, who, who are down who are, who are sort of seen as being in their camp are a lot more are, are, are a lot less strident or enthusiastic in their views yes that's 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 a good point i mean you know it's 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 to say there are so many so and so number of christians in the country and then and then uh, and then some fundamentalists seem to assume that they all agree with them and they uh, that's not my experience either i know lots of christians i know as many christians as i probably know atheists and i know there's a very wide range of views and you know and just, then to, know, just to know does everyone hear the chat because everyone i know we're, i know it works but polly does not have does not hear it Oh, I'm back now, guys. Okay. Ah, hi. You know, and I, 
just as a uh, personal note, when I meet people like like you like you Gary and and others that acknowledge that there are other mindsets in Christianity, they seem to be more more access, accessible to understand that we're not all the same. Mm-hmm. And I personally, I'll tell you right now, I appreciate that because then you get to know the person and not the not the school of thought. And I'm I'm strong I'm strong I'm a strong believer that get to know the people. That's why I have I have a lot of atheist friends that after I explain to them how I feel about Christianity and where I sit with it, that they understand that I'm not here to try to convert anybody because that's not my job. I I don't have I don't have the knowledge nor do I have the patience to try to convert anybody. Because, you know, it, at the end of the day, it's a personal thing. You know, I sit there, I don't, I don't play, I don't vote on, in a religious manner for the simple fact that I don't believe that my, my view should affect anybody. Who am I to change someone else's life? You know, I mean, it, it's, it's their, their, pardon the, the, the pun, but it's their cross to bear. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, I think maybe Islam is a little bit, is people like are questioning it is because it looks, it's different. It's not like, uh, it's not like um, Christianity, which was in the country from the beginning. Islam was more introduced later on, and it was seen as a as an oddity, I guess you could say. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Because it's, you know, because it's, like, it's you know, not seeing, the norm. Well, yeah, seeing yeah. people in robes. And but uh, uh, even then, American history has been a wave after wave of oddities. You know, there was there was there was a definite, uh, for example, there were a lot more Jews towards the nineteenth or to the end of the nineteenth century when there were it was immigration because of problems in Eastern Europe. Um, you know, and then there was Italian immigration, which was another wave, which again added more Catholics. And then, of course, there was the Chinese, uh, the Asians, which again added a difference there. So, uh, so really, even the history of your nation, as opposed to the geographical landscape of your nation, has been a, one wave of oddities after the other. And it's, it, there's been a, a constant negotiation, I think, if I understand American history correctly, between different waves of immigrants and some kind of like a critical negotiation process that's, that's, that's gone on over the last 200 odd years. And, and that's my I, understanding of American history anyway. And that's why we're called the melting pot of the world, because of different cultures from different countries come to the United States so that they don't have to have the same persecutions that they have in their own country. Mm. And each one of those different ways has had to negotiate something that is like America, you know, being an American and American culture. Absolutely. So, bit, so, so being an American is is is, is perhaps a, a good position to be in um, when it comes to when it comes to the question of, of well, how 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 do we integrate? How do we how do we accept? How do we not just accept but also criticise? There's always it has to be a critical process where people learn off each other. And also, I didn't, I didn't, are prepared to change their minds, and that, that seems to be sorry, sorry. a strength of this kind of cosmopolitan sort of like system well, of, of, of nation building. You know, well, <clears throat> I know that recently. Uh, see, I would agree with that to a cer- certain degree, but my my biggest problem with my own country is that you know we got a we have a president that's in office right now that literally last week said that if you're a Christian, you're a terrorist. Anybody that is pro-life is a terrorist. And I find that appalling. I mean, that's taking religion. And if, if you even so much as oppose abortion, like I do, yeah. Yeah. I'm now a terrorist, figuratively speaking. In if, if I understand what Obama said on the news, out of his own mouth, and I find that appalling. I, I'd be surprised if your president actually st- stood up and said that. Oh, that's he what he meant. Uh, can you he sign did. me a news source? Can you sign yes. me a news source for that? Um, you, while you guys talk, I'll find the the source for you. Okay. Oh, okay. I was looking 
I was I mean, not I sure. Mean, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of, that whole cultural divide thing, because pretty much that's what, like, you know, like, you see, like, I remember when I was younger, I saw people with veils, and like, what, who are these people, you know, like, it's not a cultural, it's more of a cultural difference that's bigger than Europe. Did we lose you? No, I'm here. Okay. But yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, Europe is pretty much, I guess you could say, it's, it's... Sorry. I'm going to mute my mic. But yeah, Chicky, you have anything to say? Uh, uh, I, I want to know exactly what Obama said, so I'm just looking. Uh, when did he say this? Was it this week? Last week? Last week, apparently. Ah, okay. You know, I always thought the violin argument for abortion uh, uh, was crap, and I am for abortion. Wait, what's the violin argument? Oh, it's uh, um, if you if you found yourself uh, sort of um, if you if you woke up and you were uh, and your organs were strapped uh, uh, hooked up to the, say the kidneys of like a, a brilliant violinist to sort of. Um, living off of you, uh, you wouldn't be obliged to sort of stay in bed for a year and uh, and uh, let them live off you. But that argument just seemed totally uh, pointless because you know you don't play an active role in uh, in getting the violinist. Uh, it, it ignores the reproductive issues. Yeah. Well, I mean, like like yesterday, um, I was on Donald's show with what's his name, um, Leonard, and he was talking about abortion and stuff, and he was like, oh, well, he brought up Hitler instantly. <laughs> Which I was going to say, actually, wow, Paul's law already. But, yeah. I mean, what do you think, um, Gary? About what, sorry? Um, abortion. <laughs> I think about abortion. While they're doing, while well, well, they're looking up that thing. About that quote about the issue of abortion. Mhm. What what's it con? Like, it'd be interesting to think about what's it contest, what's being contested when people talk about abortion. They'll say life, I bet. Someone will say life or choice. Yeah. Um. And and both sides are obviously putting it in phrases in 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 a way that's difficult to disagree with. Um, I'm back, by yeah. the way, and I put that oh. post in there for you, Gary. Okay, cheers. Let's uh, see if I can find it. It's in the chat chat box in the uh, uh, Skype call. Why, why are you saying that? Basically, what I said on my show yesterday are some, some, some serious facts. 73% of the people that um, that do abortions are, it's known as a contraceptive for them. They are too irresponsible to keep their legs fucking closed while they're having sex. Yeah. So then what do they do? Suck it out because they're, it's their, their way of getting out of responsibility. 28, uh, 27%, 28, 27% of the people that do it, do it for actual medical reasons. And when they start arguing the fact of, abor of abortion, they use that 28% instead of the 73 that's the facts. You know, so I mean, what, you could look what do you think is the crux of the matter of abortion? What's the fundamental sin or wrongdoing of abortion? With, for me, I, like I said before, I, my, my opinion about abortion it has no, it's no realm of um, religious views. It's mm -hmm. solely for from my from a male's point of view, I'm the type of person. If I'm if I make a woman pregnant, I want the responsibility of being a parent. Mm -hmm. And because if that that woman does not have that, uh, like I said in my video, it takes two to make a baby. Period. It should be two people to make the responsibility and make the decision. Now, with that being said, I do believe that. See, I'm I'm on a I'm on the fence with this because I do believe that it is a woman's body. It is the woman's choice, 
But I think the man should still have the responsibility to have a say in it, too, because he helped make that baby. If there's a guy out there that wants to be a, willing to take on the sole responsibility, he should have that option. Okay, so to be clear here, if if um, if there's if there's a couple, a man and a woman, and and they and the woman gets pregnant, and they both decide that an abortion would be good at that point in their lives, you wouldn't have a problem with that. Again, that that's between those two, and that's that's what the decision that was made. But as someone doing it solely for contraceptive reasons mm -hmm. is wrong. Strictly speaking, can you can can you use abortion as a contraception? Because sure, yeah. if you've had an if you've had an abort if you're having an abortion, something's been conceived in order to be aborted. Right. I mean, so, yeah. I mean, I mean, could you say, um, could you say, would an abortion be allowed if if the pill did not work? Like you, it was not a preventative, and it actually caused. Oh, are you asking me should they use abortion as a contraceptive? No, 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 no. I'm saying if a contraceptive. They that already like they already tried they used they already used like they they used the pill okay like the woman uses the pill right mm hmm and it it failed like you know there's a percentage chance that it could fail right yeah and like five percent <laughs> well yes but still that happens yeah I know I know it happens or it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be five percent but see here's where I this is where my part of that uh, that d discussion is there's two people involved. If the man is not wearing a condom and the woman is not wearing a diaphragm or you taking the pill or whatever, it's very rare does someone have a baby if both parties are have, using contraceptives. Donald, um, yes. so uh, if you have two people who are being incredibly lax about contraceptives and they're being completely irresponsible and not taking any measures and, you know, the woman gets pregnant, are you saying it's immoral for her to abort or it should be illegal? I, I'm not speaking on an, uh, the morality of it. I'm speaking of it from someone who's an adoptee. I was adopted when I was a kid, so I'm, I'm strongly supportive of adoption. If they don't want to have that kid, there's a family out there that does, and they should have that opportunity to take care of that kid and make, give that kid a, a life, no matter well, what. My question was, you know, there are some things which we all probably agree are immoral but aren't illegal and correctly. So say that again. Wait, say that there, again. There are some things we all agree are immoral, but correctly not illegal. Yeah, like adultery, yeah. say. Um, so does abortion, in your view, belong in that category, or does it? Should it be illegal? Um, I I think because I I stand by the the fact depending depending on the situation because I I believe that if if it's going to kill the mother, then of course have the abortion because you're saving you're saving the mother's life. But, there, but that's a 28%. The argument really should be where it really sits as a contraceptive, someone being irresponsible. And if that's being irresponsible, then yes, it should be illegal. Okay. No, but that's my viewpoint. That's my opinion. I mean, isn't it quite difficult to sort of to, to know empirically these figures? Okay, let's put it this way. If you know you're going out and fucking around, then you know you got pregnant from somebody you, you don't even know who the baby daddy is. Okay? But if you're in a, if you're in a relationship that's between the, the, the male and the female at that time, that's up to them. But if the person is doing it without the consent of the co-partner co who created the baby, if that father does not want that the male does not want to have a, a child, mm -hmm. then it, then again, it's between the two consenting adults. But I truly believe the second that that child has a brain, it's a child, it's a baby, and you're killing a life form. But but before it has before you have before it has a brain, is it a life form? See, that's where I that's where I sit. Couldn't the the. Um, when it has a brain, it's a living being. Okay, so wherever, whatever time frame in the cycle that it has a brain, it is a human being. Regardless if they have consciousness, if it has a developing brain, you're killing a human being. So that's the thing, though. It, it, the thing is, like yesterday, Leonard said, you're killing it even if it was a bunch of di undifferentiated cells. 
He yeah, just, and I told you I disagreed with him on that. I don't remember that much, but but pretty much the the thing that made no sense to me is like we don't care about other life forms, you know, like like we don't care about birds or dogs. I mean, you know, like well, if we had to speak for yourself, I do. <laughs> I, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, as in like you know, if we had to kill a dog or a person, we killed the dog. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, because uh, they're, uh, yeah, I can see your point there, yes. Like, 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 I mean, like, but these are a bunch of cells, but they are human cells, but they're stem cells. So they could fail, in a sense, a human cell, I mean, a human could be failed to be born, you know, like a, uh, what's it called, a miscarriage, right? Miscarriage, right. But they won't know that yelling. they're having a miscarriage until it happens. You know, I mean, and that's where, that's where the whole debacle happens that you've got all these people that say well the abortion should be the woman's choice absolutely I completely agree that a woman should have the choice I don't disagree with that in the slightest but the problem I have with it is using it being for being irresponsible I mean people should be accountable for their actions period in my opinion so if you do something and you and you kill it because you don't want to be responsible then you should have fucking kept your goddamn legs closed so your, your issue is with the responsibility of people with regards to their reproductive choices and they're then using a, a rather dramatic intervention in the shape of an abortion to basically abjugate their personal responsibility exactly okay so your problem so therefore the issue for you is, is one of personal responsibility rather than actually um, abortion per se, isn't it? Yeah. It's more the responsibility and be accountable for your actions. Because if I did the same thing, if I went out and robbed the store, or if I went out and killed a human being with a gun, you think the law would let me get away with it? I hope not. Uh, exactly. So that's my point. Killing is killing, regardless. And the whole debate of when is it considered a human being, I... I that can be debated. You can say that the first trimester, when it's still, uh, like uh, Leonard said, that it, when it's uh, single-cell organisms or whatever, you know, that's when it's a life. I, I, I beg to differ. I think when the baby has a brain and it's developing like a human is when it's a human being and that's when it's, it's murder. Before that, I, I, don't, I don't speculate that it's human. I, don't, I know it's in human cells. But to me, when it be when it's obvious a child, and you kill it, it's no different than me walking out my door and shooting a human, another human being. And you decide. Mm -hmm. And you need to be accountable for your actions. No. Now, okay. and, and people love bringing this up, which I, I they brought it up yesterday. I think Strife was the one that brought this up yesterday. Well, what if a woman gets raped? Well, what if a, a what if the uh, there's a pair, uh, a couple out there that can give that child a, a beautiful life, and that child ends up being the president and changes the world. You'll never know because you let you killed but that baby. But it's still, a, that's not an okay. argument. That's just a, a thought experiment. You know, like who, what does that matter though, technically? It, it doesn't, and that's the point. Killing is killing. No, no, I meant as in, I meant as in, as in like, like this sperm, like, like out of 400 sperms, 400 million sperms. The, you know, you were the one that made it. I mean, yeah. I guess I don't... You, Donald, you see, your position seems a little ambivalent, because you're saying killing is killing, but you're also saying there are cases when it's acceptable, so... I'm, I'm, I'm a bit unsure. It's subjective, I guess. Okay. Because, you know, ultimately, responsibility is responsibility. <laughs> No matter how you look at it, if you're being irresponsible and you create a child, you need to be responsible and take care of your responsibility. I take care of my responsibilities. Why can't anybody else? And if they can't be responsible and they know they can't be responsible, they should keep their fucking legs closed until they can be responsible. And that's the reason why we have teen pregnancies. These kids fucking acting off of hormones and not being responsible. Do you find uh, do, do you find contraception acceptable then? Absolutely. Okay. What about Absolutely. sex education? What about what's your, what, what's your views on sex education? I don't see. I think that sex education should be taught in high school, 
and mm-hmm. well nowadays because the kids are are learning are doing it so early they need to be taught it in junior high not in first fucking grade like my kids got because you teach them about sex i know it's a natural urge i know it's a natural thing but in a developing stage in a person's life but you introduce them with sexual organs and sexual things they start getting curious younger than they should so well, I believe that sex ed is great, but at a certain age. But doesn't the sex sort of, it comes from a drive, not from, you know, this yeah, sort drive. of curiosity, which well, comes from knowing, you know, the mechanisms and the biology about it. When, when, I, was, when I was growing up, sexual biology, uh, urges and everything didn't happen to me until I was 16. I was a late bloomer from the way the kids are now. But you teach them about sex. You bring you bring the information on the table early. Then you're 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 having chances of that curiosity happening before the urges, and then the urges happen earlier. I'm totally against it happening in first fucking grade. And in Nevada, first they, grade in America. It, in Nevada, it is. They it's just, they, no. want, they want to, oh, okay. first, grade, first grade is six ish or seven, six or seven. Mm-hmm. Because, because, like, I know I was five when I was in kindergarten. So I would have been six and in, in six, I would have been six when I was in first grade. What, what's the content of the, of the, of the, of the, of the sex education? I didn't, get, I, didn't get sex education until, I didn't get sex education until middle school, late middle okay, school, well, and but, but Donald, what what you say? Your children were exposed to this at six or seven years old. Could you what 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 was in those lessons? Do you have you any idea? I never sat in the class, but they did give me a um, basic rundown of what they're going to teach. Right. I, I was in, like I said, I was in the class, so I can only speak on what they provided. But, but um, assuming they were assuming they were honest and they did teach what was on was on the lesson plans, what what did they say they were going to teach? They were teaching um, the physical body. They were right. teaching the um, the way bodies react when um, or w- what happens when the urges happen. Right. Um, and and you need to forgive me, but I have I've had six strokes in the last year, so we're talking like. <laughs> five or six years ago or okay. no, longer than maybe a little bit longer than that and so i don't remember everything but those are the ones that stick in my head hey are you, are you, guys, are you guys paying your chat paying attention to the chat because this guy named broken shovel says without ethics everyone would be a rape victim without ethics what that's what he's saying he says without ethics everyone would be a rape with victim well, uh, that that is kind of true. Uh, because our society is a society of victims. No, but I don't get how that makes sense. Because to have a baby, you you would need to have sex, and uh, I don't know. Just just seems, oh, like, just, seems just seems that maybe like, he'll like, maybe he'll explain it to us what he means to put it in context. He says his, his comment before that is sex comes from hormones. Without ethics, everyone will be a rape victim. Yeah. So I think it's so perhaps he's saying that, that that sex is an innate, powerful drive, and without ethics to sort of come and, and moderate it, that, that it'd be it'd be really bad. Everybody would just be what he says here. There we go. Sex in the at the right time in the ethical way. So yeah, he's probably just saying that sex drive needs ethics to regulate it, otherwise it'd be this destructive force. Wait, wait, no. What about what about the uh, what do they call them? What, what what is that Hindu that Hindu uh, culture that lived in India that uh, that that loved sex? What was it? Uh, oh, they're, they're, never heard that. Oh, the, the um the oh man, I know it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Kama Sutra. Oh, the Karma Sutra. Yeah. Yeah, those were the guys, Sutra. right? That was yeah, a book, no? What? I thought it was a book. Was it a book or a religion? Yeah. Uh, there was, there was, there was, a book. It's yeah, positions was, of sex. Yes, I there know. Was but, 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 of, of, there was a tradition of finding the divine in the erotic in India, and it's very prevalent in, in some sects of uh, uh, Hindu art as well, where there's, there's certain uh, certain statues and certain carvings that shocked the Victorians. Um, that's, so, yeah, there's, there's a tradition of, of finding the erotic in the divine. 
in in, oh. in India. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I mean, like, oh yeah, Kama Sutra, yeah, Kama Sutra, slash, Kendrick sex, but uh, but yeah, like, like they seem productive, even though they let their hormones go. If if they or they just liked it, I guess. But even in the books, they they show they they depict adults, and it's different positioning insects to find the ultimate orgasm that's not taught to children yeah. I mean shit when they have their arranged marriages they get married at 10 or 11 and don't even aren't even allowed to have sex until they pay off the father okay and they even then when they haven't paid off they can't have sex until after their age of 18 that makes sense. yeah like, they have so, to be celibate students quite a while right from what I know. so in America, you know, I mean, at least it, I can only speak about Nevada and and California because those are the two states I've I've had I've I've lived in. But Nevada is the only one. Well, actually, not the only states, but Nevada is the only one I've had a family with and had children and had to deal with this personally. And I'll tell you, I mean, I find I find sex had a great program, but at the right time, because what's that famous phrase that says? Uh, sex uh, kills. Out of, no, out of sight, out of mind. Oh. You know, if you bring if you bring the the information to them early in age, they start being curious before the urges actually happen. Okay. You know, you say you you you're you're a supporter of individual personal responsibility. Absolutely. When would you when would you start sort of making intimations of that to your children and start think children should start to be told that they're personally responsible for their for their act, for their for their behavior. Uh, since the since they could understand words, right? They're accountable so, for their actions. But here, look, you brought this up. This is a good point for me. Um, I've taught my kids from the oldest one who is now twenty two, to the youngest one that is fourteen, at a certain age, which was I think we told them started teaching them accountability at six. Mm -hmm. So from six on. We've always drilled into their head. You do you do an action, positive or negative, you will be responsible of whatever happens. So if you do good grades and you follow what the what you're supposed to do at school, let's just use school as an example, then you get accolades. But if you screw up and you fail in school, you get grounded. Because I don't want my kids I know my kids' capacity, like my sixteen year old. He has an IQ of 135, okay? He has the ability to get bored in, in excelled classes. So I know he's capable of getting straight A's. Now, let's go to my daughter, who's the youngest. I know her capacity. She's got, she's got, got dyslexia, so she has problems reading and comprehending. So I don't ask her to get straight A's. I ask her to get C's. And that's all she can really get. If she gets anything better, I give her nothing but praise. But if she doesn't just, if she blatantly does not, my dad used to tell me growing up, there are three things you do in school to get at least a C. Show up, participate, and do your homework, and you can at least get a C. If you do those three things, it is impossible to fail unless you purposely do not do the work. And then when you don't do that responsibility, then you are grounded. If you have a D, and I find you not, and I ride their butts about doing homework. Did you bring your homework home? Oh, no, I forgot it. Well, then you're grounded. Because at 14, you're not going to say, I, I forgot, and get away with it. Because that's, that's your lame excuse to try to get out of it. No, so my kids know what responsibility. No, I haven't only been on if my, for, If one of my kids uh, right, now, right now, I've been on for, my older boys, that is, including the 16-year-old, got a girl only, pregnant, yeah. He would have to find himself minutes. a job and be responsible. Please, I, 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 because I, 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 none of my kids. Okay. Please, I that care. makes sense. But I care. Please. in a way, doesn't that mean that yeah. you've been offering yourself some kind of sex education since they were six or seven years old? I'm a good speaker when I'm by myself, uh, but not when explain you're. Explain again, please. Well, in, you 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 put this message of personal responsibility. Uh, and you've been teaching them that to them since they're six or seven. Room, but not here, so in some kind of way, you've you've that's that's watch, the pattern you say now. You say you say watch to your son if you've got a girl pregnant, it would be your responsibility. 
So Correct. it seems. So it seems that there's, there's in, in, a, in a sense, that you, 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 there's a, been a program of, of sex education based on personal responsibility that's no, been going whole, back until they're six or seven. No, I, I did not discuss sex with them until they were of age. But you, you put, you put, you, 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 when you did discuss it, you did discuss it in this, this framework of, of you are responsible. It's your, you know, you're, the choices you make, you have to, you have to sort of well, like accept them and own them as your own. So, so in a way, the the sex well, education, yeah, in a, in a, sex education you know, isn't necessarily just the, the the plumbing as it was, as it right. were. There's there's there's, there's there's, there's more to it than that. I mean, a good sex education will not just be a biology lesson. It'll be it'll be a, a lesson in civics and, 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 and responsibility and ethics, wouldn't it? And unfortunate, though, in this, at least in Nevada, they don't do that education-wise. They don't teach them the civic responsibility of it. They just tell them, as long as you protect yourself, it's okay. Basically, they're not saying these words, but it's perceived as such. Or our kids would not be getting pregnant at 12 and 13 in this country. Okay? They don't show them that being what happens and what happens after you have that sex. If that condom breaks, then they're, they have to be responsible for their actions. Not just sit there and go, you know what? I think I can keep my legs wide open for everybody just as long as I use a diaphragm or the pill or, or condom. They don't break. Well, you know, we all know that they're, they're, the chances of a condom breaking are pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and I'm I'm not saying abstinence either because I I believe in nature taking its course. If it happens, it happens. But be responsible of what may come. So, yeah. when when you brought up the uh, I I've done I mean a roundabout way of done sex ed. The only part of the sex ed that I teach my kids is the responsibility part that the schools don't teach. And why do you think schools don't teach that in, 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 in those states that you mentioned? Because, I don't know, I, I, they're insane. They want to teach the kids sex ed in first grade. That's my problem. The grade level is where my problem is. Mm. Okay. You know, the I, video, The Thaw, the Christians, uh, there was one who said, you know, fourth grade and up. Uh, and that seemed unbelievable, really. I mean... It just it's hard to believe without without seeing it, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, it's 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 it's. I mean, it'd be good to hear what what people. So, if there's anybody who who was involved in education in those states, what 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 you know, or that either as teachers or as legislators, uh, whether what what they would say as well. Uh, because obviously I'm, I'm on a, diff a different side of the planet. I don't know what 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 the particulars of, uh, of education are in Utah. Um, but it's, I'm, uh, it's, in, I'm in Nevada, not Utah. Okay, sorry, Nevada. Yes. Uh, so it's sort of like um, it'd be interesting to see what 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 shapes uh, sex education policies in these in these various let, states. Let me give you. Let me uh, let me enlighten you on on the basic idea of the laws in at least in the Washoe County that I lived which is the northern part of Nevada you have yeah. Las Vegas that's in the southern most southern part and then you got Nevada that's at the top basically by Sacramento or about an hour and a half two hours from Sacramento California <clears throat> to give you a geographical idea of where I'm at in this state they I'll use the most recent example with my 16 year old he ran away from home okay because he decided he, that doing drugs would be more and for uh, more self self gratifying than to do his responsibilities as a student as a parent we feel like we're we're prisoners in our own homes we can't discipline our kids we can't tell them what to do because they look at us and laugh because they know they don't have to be accountable for their actions. And this is why. If he, since he ran away, I put a report in <clears throat> as him a runaway. The second day he ran away, he was gone 16 days. On the second day of that 16 days, I put a report in. The cop literally told me, this is just a formality. We will not hunt him down and pick him up. If we come across him, we will then run his name, find him as a runaway, and bring him home. 
because it is a status offense, not a criminal offense. Now, let's just say during that 16 days, he decides that he's going to rob a store or shoplift or do break some kind of law. They pick them up, take them to juvenile hall for three hours, and then calls the parent. If the parent say like I want to, I want him to be responsible for his actions. If the parent oh, does not pick him up within a 24-hour time vomit? frame, I that? used to say an, uh, uh, every hour after that I was wrong. I got educated. My uh, law enforcement oh. explained it to me, so now I know. It's 24 it's hours for every any any time after 24 hours, the parent gets fined a hundred dollars for not picking up his kid. But they call you three hours after they pick him up. And if we do not pick him up, the parent gets fined. If we don't pick him up after 24 hours, the parent gets fined. If after, I think it's every three hours after that, it's an extra $100 fine. After I'm with five, you here. Huh? I'm, I'm with you here. That's stupid. I mean, you've called the cops and you said, you know, find my son. And then, yeah. And, and here's the topper. When you they go to Juvenile Hall, it's a fucking glorified daycare. They have all the PlayStation systems, or I mean all the play systems. They've got ping pong tables. They've got pool tables. They've got a big screen TV. I know because I've seen it. Their, their cells, they've got five inch mats. And their doors aren't locked. Okay, that's not fucking jail. That does not teach you accountability, and thus the reason why the kids have no respect. They show no, they, they have uh, o, uh, ODD, which is Oppositional mm -hmm. Defiance Disorder. They don't want to listen to their parents because the, the parents don't know shit in their eyes. So they're not going to, they, we're not allowed to discipline our kids like I was raised, and I turned out great. I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I may not be Gandhi or some uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner, but you know what? I raised my kids right. But because of our society, for those parents who just gave up and don't give a shit about their kids, those kids teach our kids the totally opposite of what we taught them. And because they're weak-willed, they listen to them and don't want, they don't, uh, my son had the potential of going to college with a full ride. But because of his, his, friends and the what he what he's chose to go down now he's at the point of having to take a ged which Sorry, is what's a, what's a, general, it's a, uh, it's an equivalent to a diploma it's not a diploma it's for those who drop out and want to be considered graduated oh i say yes it's, okay. it's paper to wipe your ass with nowadays well i mean I like think, i've i've heard of someone got a ged at 14 I think yeah, it was. and then they went to college. Then, which was pretty good. And, and kudos to that person. But he had the opportunity to go to a university with a GED. You have to go through junior college before you go to a university, unless they're a genius and they got uh, scholarships. I mean, there are exceptions, but on the norm, a GED can only get you through a junior high first and then into a university. And he had the, he has the potential. To have done all that, in other words, go straight to a university, but because of his temporary satisfaction, he pissed it away. Not once, but three times. He got kicked out of school, okay, or he or he chose to not go to school because it was boring. That's their lame ass excuse. So you know, in this state, they they make the parents suffer for the the sins of their children, figuratively speaking. So, Donald, you know, Donald, I do have to say one thing. I mean, this might be funny, uh, just a sarcasm, but uh, you turned out great, but you're still, you still be turned out as a Christian. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. But that was of my own choice. That doesn't stop yeah, me yeah, from just, being I a mean, good person. I was being sarcastic. But... Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> but you know when they, they say that if you don't turn up and, and collect your 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 uh, your charge, your, your kid, within, within uh, two or three days, isn't that actually a punishment or a, a sanction in favor of responsible parents isn't that impressing upon parents their responsibility no that's showing that the law enforcement does not want the responsibility to show this kid he needs to be accountable for his actions because i know i have been that uh, and how i found out about all this i've lost five jobs because of this law, what law? five 
What law? Which which law? It's a law. It's a law here. No, no, no. What's the law we're asking? Oh, the law is is, is if you if like well everything I just mentioned they've they've made it a um, domestic law. It's not a it's not a state run law. It's a domestic law. What I just said about the three hours. It's not me so just. You've not been able to go in people. work. Huh? Are you saying you've not been able to go in work because you had to pick up? Your no, son? I've lost five jobs because of attendance reasons for my my children losing their minds and getting in trouble with the law ah. and having to go pick them up. Five jobs is a lot to lose. Yeah. And and all over attendance. I've never been late for work in my entire life. I've never uh, when I'm sick. I have to be so sick that I can't even get out of bed to not work. So when I lose jobs over attendance issues, there's something other than it's me. Okay, my kids, my two, my middle son, who would not listen to his mother and I when we were telling him what he the choices he is making is going to get him put in prison. Sure as shit, he ended up in prison. He's out now, and he's trying to turn himself around. But he could have avoided even going to prison if he would have listened to reason, listened to logic. But he only has his own personal logical way of thinking of it. So, so what, what could the state or employment law do to help you in your, in your situation? What would you uh, like to see from the state or the law or, or, or the society in general? Uh, in the state, I, I want them to be account make the kids accountable for their actions. You know, right. I mean, it, see, there there are those kids who who you can talk. See, this whole law about that all kids are the same. That all you have to do is you know sit there and go he's your boo boo. You know, talk baby talk to them and and or talk to them and that works. Not all kids t can need that. Some kids, you know, the, the, there's a comedian out there named uh, Bill Ingvall. He's an American comedian. And he makes this statement. He says, you know, some kids need a timeout. Some kids need a knockout, figuratively speaking. Doesn't mean you really knock your fucking kid out. Just means you need to physically discipline your kids. Some yeah. of them. Some of them. Not all of them. Just like in my family. There are two kids that all I need to do is talk to them. And the other two I need to spank them. That's what got me three years of probation and a year suspended sentence for giving my two oldest ones two swats on the ass. That's it. Two. So, wait, so wait, so wait, spanking a child is considered child abuse? Uh, here, I got it better for you. Let me, let me back up. In 98, it was against the law, to, which I didn't know, but I, I knew and I found out later, but giving your kids any swats on the ass was illegal. It gave you a child abuse charge on your record. The day they sentenced me and the day I started on probation, they passed a law in Nevada that you can spank your kid with an open hand. Well, at least it's not like, at least it's, there's, at least, I mean, do they have a law about spanking a kid with a belt? I think, like, that's something I well, think. The law now states in Nevada, if you leave a mark, it's, it's against the law. That's child abuse. Oh. So the ramifications of what you use or... See, I, I prefer my hand. Okay? But my kids are too old for spankings now anyway. But the damage is already done. Matter of fact, here's... Uh, I'll, I'll continue the story. When they closed the case, I got my I got my justification when I went to court. When, they, Pat, when, they, when we were waiting for court, my middle son, the one that went to prison, he's running back and forth in this, in this waiting room screaming at the top of his lung, waving his arms like he's fucking insane. And I told him, boy, get your ass over and sit down. The caseworker was sitting right next to me, okay, standing less than a, a little more than a foot and a half away from me. He says, I don't have to listen to you because she said so. I looked at her and she goes, oh, hi, I got kids. You can, you, can, I know you have to discipline your kids the way you need to. We're only here for formalities. Went into court, and when, after all the blasey blah court jargon was said, the judge made the biggest fucking mistake she could ever do. She asked me, is, is there any last things you need to say, Mr. Curry? I said with a smile, I said, yes, ma'am, thank you. Um, I want your home number, your home address, your office number, and your office address. 
And she said, why? I says, because when these two boys get out of control, I'm bringing them to your ass for you to discipline my kids because, oh, that's not our job. I said, the fuck it isn't, lady. You took the responsibility away from me the second you made it a, made me go to jail and put me on probation because I discipline my kids the way I see fit. I don't abuse my children. They're not neglected. They're not deprived. They're not, they are fully provided for. And the, the uh, bailiff stood up and started walking towards me. I said, no, sir. That was her mistake. She told me, is there any last words I had? So he turned around and sat back down. I walked out of that courtroom with a smile on my face. I still had the, the uh, history. Of the, uh, now I have a child abuse charge, so I can't own a firearm as long as I live in the state of Nevada. Because if you have a domestic charge, you can, no matter what the domestic charge is, if you have a domestic charge, you cannot own a firearm. And it's horseshit. Boy, because I, I was I trying to raise Nevada, my kids. I thought, I thought in Nevada you don't need a license to carry a gun. Huh? I thought you don't need a license to carry a gun. Oh, no, you do. <laughs> you do. You, you still have to go through the Brady Bill. And the Brady Bill is dominant in this state. See, I, but the thing is, is, I can own a black powder fixed rifle no matter what. But I can't own a... a is, that, is that in case we British come back? Because that's, that's a very old weapon. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's in case the Redcoats come back. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. you know, so, I mean, so I have a little bit of distaste for the state because they want the parents to be active in their children's lives, but from a distance. You know, only until the kids act out and cause a problem mm-hmm. is how... It's the only time that, that, that the, the parents are accountable for their kids' actions. Up until then, the parents can't, can't teach them that, you know, there's some parents that can say, you're grounded, and they'll go, dang it, and, and they, they're, they stay grounded. In my house, if I gr- ground my kids, they laugh, ha, 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 and run out the window. Okay? okay. This is, but that's because I haven't been able to put them in check. Some kids need it. I know some what people have... Support, what about support from schools or, or your, your schools or, or the local authorities? Local authorities are a joke here. I mean, I called mm-hmm. the cop when my son, 16-year-old, came into my house at 4.30 in the fucking morning, drunker than a skunk, him and I went toe-to-toe. And I put him in a restraint, and I told my wife to call the cops. The cops didn't show up for four free, or three hours. My son jetted and ran away because he knew he was in trouble and there was nothing I could fucking do about it and when the cops showed up is there anything we could do for you I said <laughs> no because there's nothing you're going to do for us I mean I'd tell you to go look for him but you, you, you've told me yourselves that there and these are cops that I've known for the last 13 years because of my middle son I, I've know, I know the cops in my area personally because of the fact that I've had to call them because they, they had this one rule, uh, one law or, or rule that if you have an incorrigible kid, you report them as incorrigible, and enough reports, then the law will do something about it. The funny thing is, uh, and Donald, even Donald, then, what they do is they slap their hand and make the parent be responsible. Well, Donald, you know it seems there's a very there's a very sort of stark division here between what the parent can do on one hand, and then it's it's straight from that to the police. There doesn't seem to be any other support structures in place. Like, I just you know, saw, I, I just saw a, a question from the chatters, Rizla. Um, to your question, yes, I did. I did it once, and I regretted it. I learned my lesson. And then when I became an adult, I became an alcoholic. I've been sober now 15 years. I know the ups and downs of alcoholism. I've seen it in my life, and I've been an alcoholic. And I don't want my kid to fucking run down that same track. And that's why I'm so adamant about my son not drinking. I've seen the... <coughs> huh? Once? Fuck off. Okay, you need to listen to me. I was an alcoholic for my adult life. I don't want my son to get into that trap. Okay. And does alcohol play a part in this in the moment? Absolutely. Huh? Yeah. Is alcohol actually playing a role in this at the moment, these, these troubles? No, well, on my son's behalf, yeah. 
Yeah, you saw. I mean, you saw. Yeah, yeah. He's but, he's I mean, gone down the he's gone down the road of being an alcoholic. He's he's doing all the signs, sleeping in all day, drinking all night, coming home drunk. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. He he's showing all the basic signs of an alcoholic. And there's nobody you can talk to about. I mean, there's nobody you can sort of ask for help or, or for, for, you know, you just, you just, it's basically you, the police, and, 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 and your kids, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. And so if I want to get him, if I want to put him in a rehab, you know what they told me? Mm. Just because, of just the same thing with the drug rehab. We asked the, pro, the Jan, Jan Evans, which is Juvenile Hall, if he gets brought in, can you give him a drug test? They said, he can refuse the drug test. So, and then, but in the same breath, they said, well, you need to go down to CVS and request, uh, request, uh, or buy a drug test yourself. I said, are you fucking kidding me? Like, he's gonna, he's gonna agree with a drug test from us if he's not gonna agree with one from you. So, why don't you pray for him? I'm not. I'm not one of those people that that sits there and thinks that prayer is the answer. That's why. Sorry, somebody I, no, asked, asked you, "Why don't you pray for him?" I just answered it. Who said that? Um, uh, Rizla. Yeah, Rizla. Uh. <laughs> I think that might be being sarcastic. Um, oh, he was, or she was. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's 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 just that just sounds like. I mean, from, from speaking from perspective of where 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 me and Cheeky live, that just sounds like you've been abandoned. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, um, because in this country we, we have a welfare state, and there's, there's the, you know we, we we pay taxes and national insurance for it. Um, th- there would be other options. You could there, call you know, in other agencies. Let me tell you what, what you know the two old the two oldest boys. We've dealt with these issues. That's why we're at the point now with the third and final boy that him doing all this, we know what the response of the police. We know what the what they're going to do. We know that they'll suggest to go to family services. And yeah. when we go to family services, he has to voluntarily go. And that puts stress on me. And thus the reason why I've had six strokes in the last year. Because of all this stress. Wait, wait, you had, you had six strokes... In the last, you mean you mean 2012 through 2013? Yes, February of 2012, I had a, a debilitating stroke, and then I had a heat stroke in August, and four other st- mini strokes since. Okay. And the stress of this has played a part in that. It's the it's seventy percent, seventy if not eighty percent of the of the cause. Yes. Okay. So you seem to there seems to be no pathway whereby you can report this issue to the police. And then the police can uh, refer it to the family services. Uh, that, but that, see, that's, that's my the, point. That's my point. The whole uh, family services, all they do is they don't they don't help us at all. All they want to mm. do is give us therapy and, and give us parenting advice. We've heard it all. I don't think there's a new... Uh, I think the latest thing that I've ever heard was just to ignore the kid. That's the latest one I've heard. But I've heard it all. I sit there and I and I I do a mental note of what the what the um, therapist says, and then when I go to the next one, it's the exact same, almost like it's fucking scripted. So I've heard it all. So why would I want to waste my money and my time to hear the same rhetoric? Mm. There and and on the ultimate thing here is that he has to be willing to go in, or it's just us having therapy. Yeah. You know, the, the whole fam- the whole family services is to help the kid. And see, they have this one place here called the McGee Center, which if the cops, which is where the cops take him now. I found out recently that the cops would take him to the McGee Center, and the fucking kid can walk off the property voluntarily. He is not forced to stay there. It's not the so. You know, everybody everybody says that you know I, I don't try enough. I've tried everything. And that's why I get so frustrated. Um, Rizla is name given to paper leaf for rolling tobacco. Oh, I was reading the chat. Sorry, but you know, the, the, my point is, is that you know, it, there are those situations, and there's a lot of us out here. I mean, I've been contemplating getting making a support group 
mm. for other parents who are going through the same shit. I mean, mm. I'm not a perfect parent. I mean, I don't, but I don't abuse my children. Here's, you want to hear the shitter? They get, they told my wife when they sentenced me, the DA told my wife in the waiting room that if it wasn't for election year, he would not have even charged me with the offense. What, what political impact would charging you with the offense have then? That shows that he's 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 strong on crimes or a supposed child child abuse. Yeah. I say because yeah. now hear this in nineteen January January twenty eighth of nineteen ninety nine after they passed the law and they sentenced me in Carson City which is thirty three miles away roughly there was a family a mother a father and a grandmother that locked their fucking adolescent babies in a bathroom for five fucking years. And you know what they got? 18 months of fucking probation. Okay? And I got the book thrown at me. So that's why I have no love for this fucking state and their laws. Not only that, but they take out... Last year, they took $50 million out of the education fund to pocket their... to put money in their fucking pockets. And they wonder why Nevada is 50th in the, in the country for graduation rates. We have a 31 to 32% graduation rate in this state. So that's why I keep saying that not everybody is the same. You know, everybody has their own personal issues that they have to deal with. But oh, the truth it's, yeah, but it's the full story. You need to hear the full story, don't you? Exactly. I don't see. I I was abused as a child. I can speak uh, volumes about child abuse. Okay, when I was adopted, right before I was adopted, I was in such a bad array. I had my biological father drive a steel spike through my leg because he was pissed off at work. At two and a half. Okay, so I know what child abuse is, and these kids don't get abused. But I have now a child abuse charge on my record. Mm -hmm. Without knowing the whole story, if some, uh, an employer sees that on my record, that's why I don't get a job. Um, guys, just to note, um, how about we have final statements? Because the show's, show's got to end. Okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sorry, I didn't mean to rant on your show there, Strife. Well, no problem, because pretty much Steve fucked up the beginning, and I think he's having internet troubles because I cannot get in touch with Steve. So, okay, oh. but tomorrow is the uh, discussion with Free Will, with Aspiring Philosophy, Johan, Rats, um, Cheeky will be there, right Cheeky? Yeah, I'll be there. And um, if we can get Dutch Philosopher, um, a guy named James Stillwell, the open air atheist, have any of you heard of him? Nope. No. Okay, well him, if we get that guy, and uh, Realistic Nihilus, those, th those uh, three, those six people, or those four people will be on tomorrow. And I'll be hosting the call tomorrow, so we won't have these troubles. So there's technical difficulties. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, it was technical difficulties from the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, cool. think that, I think that would be actually the title. But, uh, um, <laughs> Donald, uh, you, you want to say final statements? And DPR, are you there? He's been in the call this whole time. He hasn't said a single thing, has he? Hmm. All right, well, yeah, I have... Go ahead. Donald, you're breaking up. Okay, okay, go, go ahead with final statements now, because it should work. Okay, yeah. uh, my final statement is... Um, no, Islam isn't particularly extreme. It's just the extremists that are extreme. Okay, my um, my final statement about the uh, oh, were you done, Gary? Yes, yes. Okay, my final statement is is this is that you know, I've always I've always stood by this statement, and I and I'll continue to sit, sit by the statement. If you're, if you get a chance to get to know a Islamic person, get to know the person first, and. If they if they perceive if you disagree with what how they live their life, then don't don't interact with them. 
I mean, but if they if they're nice, genuinely nice people, I I always I always advise people, you know, smile because it's contagious. I could talk volumes about what we were just talking about, but I'm not going to because that wasn't part of the discussion. Um, yeah, DPR, are you there? I guess he's gone. But yeah, so pretty much, um, don't forget to tune in for tomorrow. I'm sorry if I'm about the technical difficulties that we're having this um, week. So um, by next week, all the problems should be sorted out. And the yeah, next Saturday's topic, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, or Saturday, Sunday's, will be the end is nigh one of those days. That's just um, some future reference. You guys know about, like, you know, uh, uh, Gary, you know, like, you know, how Christians and, I guess, Muslims, too, say the end is coming? Yes. Yeah, that's kind of what next week's show will be about. Okay. I don't oh. think I'll be much use of you, I'm much use to you in that context. Why is that? Uh, um... I don't know anything about that kind of revel revelations and apocalyptic literature and and sort of like the rapture and all that kind of stuff. It's a little bit beyond my uh, beyond my expertise, I think. To me, it just seems like people are bored with their lives, just sort of like making things up about how they're going to get whisked the into heaven, like in some fantasy novel. Yeah. It's often like it's often like it's just. It's just like it's it's there's a just reason why these things are coming to end or so because the things have got in such a state something dramatic needs to happen to sort of like uh, set it straight. There's often a there's often a a moral kind of aspect to, to apocalyptic kind of belief. You know, like you know, I'm so frustrated at this that something's got to come and yeah. really press the re. It's like when you, it's like when you rage reset your computer. Which I'm sure some of that's been going on this evening. But well, you know, I'm so curious about this. I, uh, you guys hear is cheeky, right? I hear cheeky, don't you? I can hear yeah. cheeky, yes. Yeah, but I don't see him on the Skype window. That's the weird thing. No, he's there. I yeah, see but, him. But he's not on the Skype window. If you look at the Skype on, on the show and on here, it's oh, only, yeah. it's, it's yeah. only you and Gary. Just a disembodied voice. Yeah, yeah, it's the voice of Proof of dualism. <laughs> it's a sign of the end times. <laughs> you know, and, and from my perspective about the whole end times as a Christian, I'll, I'll tell you right now, it'll happen when it happens. I mean, if you if I don't wake up tomorrow morning, that'll be my end times. Because, oh. you know, it, it, on a... On a hey, I gotta let you go, bud. Uh, my brother's calling me. Okay, see ya. Okay. And, uh, Hi, right, just, just know we're gonna end the show now, so um, see ya tomorrow if you come on. Thank you. Yeah.